All right. Good afternoon. Um, thank you, Tim, and uh, thanks uh, to the OMA for inviting us to, to uh, give you an overview of uh, authentication in the FIDO Alliance and, and some of what we are up to at, uh, at Knock Knock Labs. I'll talk a little bit about why that's, uh, that's relevant for you. Uh, my personal background, I've been in, uh, in the security game for about uh, 15 years, uh, wandering through DRM, PKI, infrastructure, and encryption uh, software along the way. And um, this is uh, my fifth startup, so I must be crazy, but I'm, I'm here uh, doing it again. So um, what's the authentication challenge? I think that everybody understands that until you can recognize people, devices um, in real time, we are simply compensating and introducing friction and unable to realize the full potential of these lovely infrastructures that we are, uh, we are building. And uh, often when I talk about authentication, uh, people get a bit confused about uh, authentication versus identity versus federation. Um, and so I, I find it useful to refer to this little diagram. Um, so if you look at it, the base of the pyramid is how do you map something physical uh, into a digital record of some kind? Uh, how do you manage uh, something at scale uh, when it comes to user identities or, or, di or device identities? And then there's the usage um, of one of those identities, a claim of some kind that's rendered in real time. And then there's the federation problem, which is I log into United. United wants to tell Hertz, Rajiv's a good guy, let him book a car without logging in again. Um, and then there's the end user experience part, which is single sign-on. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is just the authentication part. So um, let me reframe uh, this authentication issue, because usually when people think about authentication, there's a tendency to think about it from the perspective of risk or regulation or uh, depending on who you are these days, perhaps something like reputation. And, uh, and I'd, I'd like to encourage you to start thinking about uh, authentication as being a gateway to user experience. And as the gateway to user experience, you can think of it more in terms of design, delight, and dollars, um, not just the security aspect. And so really, you have to do a good job on both fronts. And so take, for example, the fact that there is this idea of this ignition key, that regardless of what kind of vehicle you drive, at the end of the day, your experience starts with that ignition key. And, and there's been an evolution in that ignition key over a period of time from this little hand crank to this uh, you know, little key that's supposed to be unique to the vehicle to this fob. Um, and if you think about what that FOB does, it's no longer just about starting your car or just about security. It's also about convenience uh, and personalization. Uh, you get in, the car adapts to you. Um, you know, the seat raises to the right level, the music flows, the temperature is the right temperature. It's a lovely experience when it works. If it's a crummy experience, you can have a beautiful car, but if that initial ignition experience is terrible, uh, people are going to hate your infrastructure, hate your app, hate whatever it is that you're delivering as a service. And so I think everybody understands that, that what we've been doing this with is passwords, and passwords have been failing. And we've been applying what I call interim measures. Uh, everybody's familiar with the two-screen, two-channel type of solutions. Hey, I'm going to send you a message over here with this long code. Type it into this, uh, this other screen over here, um, and that way I'll, I'll assure myself that it's really you. Um, and, and there are some new things on the horizon. Apple released uh, their fingerprint sensor. Some of the other vendors are working on, on their own novel methods of, of authentication. So there are some next steps on the horizon. So let's do a reality check. How are we doing? Um, Janrain, which is a, an interesting company, did a survey where they asked end users um, about uh, passwords. And 47% and, and of the users that were surveyed said they would rather clean the toilet then pick a new password. And that tells you something about, uh, about how end users feel about this problem. Um, if you're an organization, um, you certainly realize that all of this ratcheting up of password complexity hasn't helped, because what the users have done is made life simple for themselves and repeated that password across multiple sites, which means your security is as good as the weakest link in the chain. Witness uh, you know, folks like LinkedIn and, and Yahoo that lost there uh, in Adobe recently, um, that lost those symmetric secrets that were stored in the back uh, of their servers. And then finally, um, when, you, when it comes to things like building ecosystems, where we are trying to send an identity or an authentication 
request across organizational boundaries. Um, while we have lovely pieces of technology there, we're kind of stuck in the mud. Um, okay, so this is not because um, there aren't uh, great widgets out there, uh, and, and these widgets are all available to help you um, make security better. Um, biometrics, uh, SMS codes, uh, TPM chips, secure elements, there's a ton of this stuff out there. Um, but what we've seen is marginal penetration in the enterprise and almost the zero penetration into the web. Call will be disconnected. Okay. Goodbye. So, um, all right. So let's see if I can dismiss that. Great. Um, all right. So, uh, so obviously, part of the problem here is that a bunch of these folks are are all uh, relying on what I'd call unique methods of plumbing. So think about it like, uh, like this, if you're trying to wire up this building and every light and every piece of electrical equipment, every socket had a different piece of wiring going back to the mains, that would be a terrible way to go build an infrastructure. Okay? Um, so how do we move towards a solution? Well, you know, one of the things we observed um, as we started this venture was that uh, authentication is really that, that missing piece. Whether you're talking about the cloud, you're talking about mobile, or the upcoming Internet of Things. And I like to joke that it's a little bit like saying, I'm going to build a skyscraper with toothpicks and wood uh, and glue. Um, you can certainly do it if you're very determined, but at some point it's an exercise in whimsy. When you're trying to build something like a skyscraper, you're going to have to change some of your building techniques. Um, and, and so what we uh, decided to do was to, to identify the key elements there, uh, which to us were about building an open standard uh, with a plug-in based approach and to create an interoperable ecosystem that allowed users to talk to services, devices to talk to services, devices to talk to devices, and, and leverage what has been done in the Federation business already. So let me, let me show you what this means from a practical perspective. Uh, today, if you're running any kind of infrastructure that's authenticating users, devices, applications, your backend probably looks like this. And it's pretty miserable which means that for every application, for every class of device, and for every unique method of authentication, every use case, every risk profile, you've got a different piece of wiring. Um, now what that forces most people to do is to try and select one or two methods that they're going to support across the board and force fit them over your entire population. Now that works for certain regulated environments. It doesn't work so well in the heterogeneous uh, world that we are going into particularly doesn't work in the web. So um, we are doing something very simple. Uh, so here's the core and essential idea behind what we are doing, what the FIDO Alliance is doing, which is if you take the model where the user can authenticate to the device and then have the device send an assurance up to the network, then what you've done is you've created a couple of layers of abstraction. And those layers of abstraction work very well for you because you can absorb the complexity of all of those different methods and all of those different classes of devices and methods of authentication on the right-hand side. And that's one layer of abstraction. The other layer of abstraction is what goes over the wire, which is essentially a public-private key pair-based challenge response protocol. Um, so what have we achieved here? Well, the first thing is by using public-private key pairs, uh, you'll notice that the back end there uh, has now public keys, which means if the server loses their stash of keys, big deal, um, no secrets are compromised there. Uh, so no, no uh, symmetric secrets on both ends. The key pair that's being generated is unique to the user, the device, and the website, which means that there is a non-linkability property that's gained as a result of all of this. Um, there are many other interesting benefits that accrue. I won't bore you with all of them. Come and talk to me if you're interested. But in the end, a good way to think about what we are trying to achieve here is a little bit like what we did with SSL as a building block. And SSL is one of the most successful building blocks and the notion of a standard that I think is truly valuable because when crafted well, it had very few domain semantics, if any, within it. And what it allowed you to do was to build secure infrastructures that on one end did payments, on another end operated nuclear power plants, perhaps. Um, and, and you can manage all of those across that secure pipe. What we're trying to do is a little bit like SSL as a standard for user and device authentication. Okay, um, not to forget um, the end user part. Remember those, uh, those users that would rather clean the toilet than pick a new password? Well, if you impose 
uh, it turns out uh, egregious requirements on them to carry around 16 dongles, um, then they're going to do the same thing with those dongles as well. And they're going to create pain uh, for you. So what we'd like to do is to create this infrastructure where um, businesses can pick methods of authentication that are risk appropriate and business appropriate. And end users can get methods of authentication that are strong um, but simple. People often ask, gee, how does this differ from SAML or OAuth or, or some of these federation efforts? Let me separate the two as, as, as follows. Authentication is really about the first mile of the problem. Federation is really the second mile of the problem. United can tell Hertz that it's Rajiv, go ahead, let him, let him rent a car, if United has been able to authenticate me strongly in the first place. So the usage of authentication really is to make more valuable federation-oriented assertions, and we work very closely with some of the federation players in this space. Um, it's also very clear to us that, that authentication is really a core service that needs to sync into the firmware layer. And the reason for that um, is that, uh, that end user systems are notoriously ridden with malware. And malware can pick off at, at one point or another uh, things like usernames, passwords, OTPs, etc. And, and really, um, you need to be able to think about this idea of the authentication process as a whole sinking into tamper-resistant uh, code isolated areas of various kinds. And so we've built something and demonstrating something um, that is available purely in the software layer that has certain risk profile and, and purely in the firmware layer which has another risk profile altogether. Um, lest you think that authentication is simply about logging in, it's also about approving things. Uh, do you want to delete these thousand files? Uh, you better authenticate, okay? So, um, so I'd like to, to point out that we are working very closely with some of the folks that manufacture components in, in silicon and, and are very clever with their algorithms, whether it's uh, people like Infineon or NXP and others that are bringing some of these products to market. Um, another little interesting observation, which is modern authentication, if you didn't realize this already, if you walk around the back ends of any large uh, infrastructure player today, whether it's a telco or whether it's a... Um, uh, whether it's a, um, a web uh, services player uh, or an e-commerce player, modern authentication is already a two-step process. There is the front-end offer of a credential to prove who you are, and there's a back-end risk calculation where authentication is but one of a thousand signals. Today, it's a very weak signal because it's based on username passwords. Um, so what can we do there? Well, we, can, we, we need to work on ratcheting up the strength of that signal because that back-end risk system, while it's very good, it is also capable of generating lots of false positives and degrading the end user experience. Degraded end user experience in an era of low switching costs um, uh, uh, won't work. And so part of the reason we are doing this is really to build something that complements these back-end risk systems. Um, there are many ways in which that identity pyramid that I showed you might work. Uh, some people have a view that the world is going to evolve around the, the idea of a user-centric uh, um, uh, identity. People are going to take, take charge of their own identity and go and buy tokens or devices and manage their relationships. That's one view of the universe. There's another view of the universe saying end users are lazy. They're going to maintain maybe five, maybe ten primary relationships. Uh, maybe with their, uh, with their carrier, maybe with their bank, maybe with their email provider. And everybody else is going to line up behind them. Um, you know, the cat, cat jokes are us uh, site. Probably has no business managing a password, needs to sit behind one of these guys. Um, there are people that take a regulation-centric view of the universe. Maybe it's government that's going to help. Maybe it's going to be, oh, forget all of those. Just trust me. Put all your eggs in my basket. The point is, there's going to be different stripes for different folks. If you design some kind of a base standard in this area, it's got to work for all of these. And what we've designed certainly does. Um, any of these folks can use uh, that. So there is a world that's coming uh, pretty fast at us in terms of authentication. I call this the Cambrian explosion um, uh, for, uh, for authentication. There are lots of vendors with uh, very novel silicon, very novel um, algorithms that are bringing uh, very complex and interesting methods of authentication to the table and we'll be able to see uh, the evolution of those over the course of the next year. We expect 
uh, somewhere between 120 million to, to maybe 150 million devices with this FIDO stack out next year. Um, so if this was just one little company trying to do this, we'd be a little insane. Um, and and uh, we observed very quickly that this is too big a problem for any single entity to solve by themselves. And so we started in February of, uh, of this year with about six partners, uh, PayPal, Infineon, um, Lenovo, um, uh, Ignitio, and, and uh, Validity, and Knock Knock Labs. Uh, this thing called the FIDO Alliance focused on doing authentication standards. And so the goal is very simple, which is to, to develop simpler, stronger authentication. We've gone from about six members to about 60 uh, between February and now. Um, you'll probably see a, a slew of large names, equally prominent and equally interesting, uh, being announced over the next uh, three or four months as each of these guys makes their uh, presence known. Um, there are probably a dozen others um, that are equally strong that are not revealing who they are, but choosing to work with, uh, with members of the alliance such as us that are developing solutions in this area. Uh, at the FIDO Alliance, we are doing uh, some standardization work around the protocols. Um, Knock Knock Labs has contributed some of what we've done into this area. It's a standard called UAF. Um, it's around this idea of a passwordless experience um, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we brought Google into the, the alliance, and, and Google was working on a two-factor authentication, which is use a username password, but give me something else. Maybe it's a USB key, maybe it's some other form factor, maybe it's paired over Bluetooth, maybe it's paired over NFC, maybe it's paired over something else. Um, so both of those standards are being, being worked on um, at the FIDO Alliance. Uh, it's certainly uh, Google's goal, for example, with some of the other folks they're working with as well, to bring this experience into every browser so there's no software to distribute. Um, on the UAF side, we're working with most of the major OEMs, um, some handset makers, some PC makers, to bring this stack into, into the marketplace uh, next year. The benefit, obviously, if we, if we can achieve this right, is that from the perspective of an operator that is trying to run a set of identity services, you get what we call unified plumbing. It's one backend that can absorb new methods of authentication and new devices as they come on board. Today we've got fingerprint sensors, face recognition. Tomorrow somebody's going to invent the lick your phone sensor. You're not going to rip up your backend in order to take advantage of that. And, and that world is coming at us pretty fast, and so what we'd like to do is to see if we can move these infrastructures to a building block that has very few domain semantics. With, uh, uh, you, know, you can now decide that what you want to do with this protocol is you want to build um, location awareness and, uh, and identity and link it to provide better ads. Uh, you can decide to, um, uh, to run payments over it. You can run national security networks over it. At the end of the day, the semantics are really outside the scope of this particular standard. So where, we, where are we today uh, with the FIDO Alliance? Well, there's some, some um, uh, draft specifications that will be issued in 2014. There are some pilots in progress. We firmly believe in, in uh, a rough consensus working code and adoption to prove the value of something. And so you'll probably see a bunch of that stuff out in the marketplace early. We are actively adding to the membership and looking to build out our liaison to um, other standards-oriented groups who can say, look, um, the easiest thing to do is to point to this standard as a building block for, for ours. So if you have questions, please feel to send uh, uh, email to info at fidoalliance.org or to me at rajiv at knockknock.com. What I'd like to leave you with is, is a very simple idea, which is, again, authentication is not just about security and risk and regulation and reputation. Um, it can really be the gateway to user experience and therefore an enabler for services, revenue streams, and differentiation doesn't matter what area um, you happen to be interested in as a domain. Um, one, of the, one of the beauties of the FIDO Alliance is that we've been very successful in bringing not just vendors to the table. Um, you know, there are component suppliers, there are vendors, and there are also uh, folks that are relying parties and customers of all of this stuff. So we've had a, a terrific interaction. We invite you to join us. Um, I'll be around after, after the talk if you have any questions. Thank you.